Google recently revealed that over 25% of their code is now written by AI, and that number is only going to increase. In fact, Jack Dorsey, former CEO of Twitter, actually predicted this back in 2020 when he said that AI would soon replace many programming jobs. And now we can see this happening in real time. AI is taking over routine coding tasks and there are 30% fewer job listings for software engineers. So the question is, what are you as a software engineer going to do about it? Well, I can tell you, first and foremost, don't lose hope, because when one door closes, another one opens. And today, I'll show you exactly how you can actually adapt to this changing landscape by launching your own successful business and potentially earning your first million dollars by the end of 2025. But who am I and why should you even listen to me in the first place? My name is Bugo. I started as a junior developer, just like many of you. I eventually climbed up the corporate ladder to a manager role, leading multi-million dollar projects for various Fortune 500 companies. And today, I run my own seven-figure B2B consulting firm. So I know a thing or two about building a business as a software engineer. But before I dive into the step-by-step -step process, there's something fundamental that you first need to understand. Because without this one thing, every step you take will feel very uncertain. And until you understand what this is for you, building a successful business will be like throwing darts in the dark and hoping one of them hits the bullseye. So I want you to imagine this. Let's say you gathered 100 developers, all with the same technical skills. Who would have the upper hand in building a business? The one who knows how to code the best? Maybe the one who knows the latest tech stack? No, neither. It would be the one developer who has something else that nobody else can replicate, sort of like a fingerprint. And it's what I call the unique advantage. And I know what you might be thinking. Okay, unique advantage, isn't that just a fancy way of saying do what you're good at? And I get why you think that. But let me tell you something. This is so much deeper than that. You see, unique advantage, as I call it, is a mix of your personal experiences, your physical location, and your network. And all these things are things that can't be replicated overnight. And what makes unique advantages truly powerful is that most people don't even see it in themselves because it feels too close to home. When I first started out, I didn't see my unique advantages at all. I spent a lot of time bouncing from one idea to the next, constantly chasing whatever seemed to be working for other people. And it was only after months of spinning my wheels that I realized that my advantage was hidden in plain sight. My background in consulting had trained me to understand client needs. It trained me to break down complex problems and it trained me to design targeted solutions. But that's just for me. For you, it could be something completely different. Maybe a skill in a niche industry, an unusual project you work on, or even a perspective that most other software engineers won't have. So you need to think back on your journey. What experiences do you have that others don't? What comes easily to you, but might be hard for others? And I'll tell you why this matters soon. But first, I need you to start asking yourself this question. What makes you different? Because once you unlock that, every business decision becomes clear. Now that you have a sense of your unique advantage, let's talk about something that's going to be the backbone of your business. But it's also the step where most people stumble. I want you to think of yourself as a detective hunting for the one details that everybody else misses. Only, instead of suspects, you're looking for something just as valuable in business. Something that, once you find it, can turn your business into something clients can't live without. Now, I'm not talking about a general problem or minor inconvenience. I'm talking about something much deeper. And this is what I call a high value pain point. It's the kind of issue that keeps clients up at night. The kind of challenge that, if solved, could make a real difference in their business. When I was just starting off, I didn't see the power of this. I thought any problem would do. I was building things that I thought were cool or innovative, but no one was really interested and I couldn't understand why. One day, I stumbled across something almost by accident. I was talking to my local bakery owner, just having a casual conversation, when they mentioned a frustration that was holding their team back. Now, most people would have moved on, but I kept asking questions, trying to dig deeper and deeper. And the more I asked, the more it became clear. This wasn't just a small annoyance. It was a huge roadblock that no one had managed to fix for them. And this was my light bulb moment. That hidden frustration was exactly the kind of problem that clients are willing to pay serious money to solve. 
So if you want to find a high value pain point, here's what you need to do. You need to start talking to people in your network, local businesses around you, anybody that you know that either has a business or knows somebody else that has a business. Ask questions like, what's the biggest challenge holding you back? Or if you had a magic wand, what's one thing you change? And here's a trick. Listen closely. Oftentimes, the biggest pain points are things people haven't fully articulated yet. And the moment you uncover a pain point that they feel but haven't solved, you're onto something extremely valuable. Now you should be standing at the edge of a breakthrough. You've identified that high value pain point that's been eluding everybody else. But here's the catch. Knowing the problem isn't enough. Think about this. If the problem is, let's say, a locked door, most people would try to force it open or look for the key under the mat, right? But if, what if you realize that the door was never locked to begin with and all it needed was a gentle push? You see, when I first tackled the bakery issue, I was tempted to develop an elaborate software system because I was a software engineer and I thought in terms of SaaS and I thought complexity equated to value. But then I took a step back and asked myself, what's the simplest way to eliminate this pain point using what I already know? And it turned out that a straightforward process adjustment was all that they needed. A solution so simple, it was almost hiding in plain sight. And here's the secret. The most effective solutions are often not about reinventing the wheel, but applying your unique advantage in a way that others have not considered. It's about crafting a solution that's both innovative and practical. One that directly addresses the core of the problem without any unnecessary complexity. So start mapping out how your unique skills and experiences and even your physical location can be woven into a tailored made solution. Engage with the pain point on a deeper level. Dissect it, understand its nuances, and let your insights guide you to an answer that not only solves the problem, but does so in a way that only you can deliver. But as with anything, there's another layer to this that can elevate your solution from good to extraordinary. And we'll explore that shortly. For now, I want you to focus on aligning your unique advantage with the high value pain point to create a solution that's both impactful and uniquely yours. And you're almost there. You're in a position now where you harness your unique advantage to craft a solution that hits the bullseye of that high value pain point. But then there's the final piece to the puzzle. The one that often separates successful ventures from those that fail. Imagine you've invented a groundbreaking tool, a real masterpiece. The world has never seen it before. But instead of placing it in the hands of those who need it most, you offer it in a way that doesn't quite fit their needs. It's like serving a gourmet meal at a fast food drive through The delivery doesn't match the value of what's being offered. And this is where the right business model comes into play. It's not just about how you make money. It's about how you package and deliver your solution to your ideal client. And you need to do so in the most accessible and compelling way possible. When I first transitioned my solution for the bakery into a scalable model, I initially considered one-off consulting sessions. But then I realized that what they and other businesses like them needed was ongoing support. So I developed a retainer-based service that provided continuous value and fostered long-term relationships. So choosing the optimal business model is about aligning your delivery method of the solution with your client's preferences and your own operational strengths. So be it a product such as a SaaS or service such as consulting, the model you choose should enhance the value of your solution and make it effortless for your clients to say yes to. So. Here's a roadmap to building a $1 million company by the end of 2025. Leverage your unique advantage, whether it's a skill you bring to the table, your physical location, or just people in your network. Identify a high value pain point that clients urgently need solved. Craft a straightforward solution that directly addresses that pain point without any extra bells and whistles. And last but not least, choose the right business model that makes your solution easy for clients to adopt and use. And these steps aren't just about creating a business. They're about building something that actually matters, something that people actually need and will pay for. This approach doesn't just make you a business owner. It makes you a trusted solution provider. And if you're ready for the next step, then you need to check out this video next, where I'll share the exact tactics that I used to find and land high ticket clients as a software engineer turned entrepreneur. As always, Thank you for watching.